Josh and others do not go away. Lou Pate here with you on the Savage Nation. If you'd like to take part in the conversation, 800-400-SAVAGE, 800-400-7282. And um, remember, you can check out all things on michaelsavage.com and uh, follow The Good Doctor on Twitter at a Savage Nation. And um, the latest ebook. you're definitely going to want to check it out. With this Zika virus going around, it's only going to get worse. Diseases Without Borders. You can go to michaelsavage.com and order it there. I'm still amazed that the Zika thing, uh, people are, you know, no one's really paying attention to it. Most people don't know what it, what it even is. And by the time they have to, it's going to be too late. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Savage will talk in depth about that uh, tomorrow. In the meantime, Lou Pate here with you on The Savage Nation. Islam has always been part of America. Starting in colonial times, many of the slaves brought here from Africa were Muslim, and even in their bondage, some kept their faith alive. A few even won their freedom and became known to many Americans. And when enshrining the freedom of religion in our Constitution and our Bill of Rights, our founders meant what they said when they said it applied to all religions. Back then, Muslims were often called uh, Mohammedans. And Thomas Jefferson explained that the Virginia statute for religious freedom he wrote was designed to protect all faiths. And I'm quoting Thomas Jefferson now, the Jew and the Gentile, the Christian and the Mohammedan. All right. Uh, the United States, I'm getting nauseous here. <laughs> Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Lou Pate in for Dr. Savage. Uh, check out uh, Dr. Savage on Twitter, at A Savage Nation. Of course, all things Dr. Savage on michaelsavage.com, including uh, Government Zero, No Borders, No Language, No Culture. And the latest, the ebook. you're definitely going to want to get this, Diseases Without Borders, Boosting Your Immunity Against Infectious Diseases from the Flu and Measles to Tuberculosis. Why? Because the Zika virus is spreading. How far will it spread? I don't know. But you should protect yourself early. And you've got to learn how to protect yourself early, because... By the time you decide you have to protect yourself when it's running rampant, it's going to be too late. Um, just a quick correction. Uh, going into the break, I gave out the phone number, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. I mistakenly said 800 instead of 855. I apologize for that. Um, hey, there's not a lot of 855 numbers out there, so even Dr. Savage's phone number is unique as his show, his website, and his books. Uh, we are talking about the illustrious President Obama going to a mosque in Baltimore, a mosque that has radical ties, uh, most notably to Anwar al-Awlaki, the main recruiter, uh, the Islamic militant who was killed uh, by a drone. And nobody said, I wonder if they had to put away the radical Islamic uh, weaponry, the radical Islamic pamphlets, if there was any in the house before he got there. The media does not tell you the truth about radical Islam, how they use mosques as safe houses, as they use mosques for uh, places to have meetings full of hate and planning uh, for murder of innocents. Uh, it, it is truly amazing how our own media doesn't want to report on it. And if you were listening to that soundbite of uh, President Obama talking about how Islam has always been part of America, it's boulder dash. As I said earlier, it's worth repeating. He said that Muslims built the skyscrapers in Chicago. I, I'm sure the iron workers of Italian, German, and Irish and Jewish descent would really um, agree with that. They are our scientists. They are our entrepreneurs. They are our sports heroes, police, fire. Oh, what are the rest of us just doing here? Huh? We're just wasting oxygen. We're just space fillers. Islam. All all, all the Muslims are taking oh, take the, they're, they're taking care of all of us. They're building our buildings. They're saving us from fires. They're keeping us safe from crimes. They're entertaining us with sports and in theaters, and they are shining their compassion on us. What a bunch of boulder dash. And listen to this tomfoolery from this, this guy lecturing us on a problem that doesn't exist, a.k.a. Islamophobia. Truly amazing. Scott, on uh, Line 8, the great KKAT in Utah. Welcome, Scott. Thank you for holding. Thank you for, thank you for letting me on. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a great misunderstanding, a great lack of education when it comes to what Islam actually is. Okay. And I would venture to say between 90 and 95 percent of the American populace, including educated people, do not know the history or the politics of Islam. 
Okay, and this is where and, and the ones who know at least Scott are the ones who defend it the most. But in, in light, I mean, the Doctor Savage listeners know, but enlighten us further, please. Well, I've read the Quran and I've studied all of the history all the way back to the split between Sunni and Shia, and I, I consider myself to be as much an authority on interpreting the Quran as, as any of them, since they don't have a clear leader ever since Muhammad died. So the problem is here, they have a couple of good religious tenets, but then they go they go a step further. And they they try to, to they try to uh, to enforce it by force. Where if you don't believe in their religion, according to their law, Sharia law, then you must either be you either pay a tax for not believing, or you just uh, you're you're to be killed. So Sharia politics make Islam more of a political party than a religion, and that is the big understanding. I mean, it's not just the Hindu. This isn't Hinduism. This isn't Christianity where you just you, you practice your private religion. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. The, the, the ironic thing is Obama is calling and citing freedom of religion here and we, how we have to be tolerant of a religion that has absolutely no tolerance for, for our faiths. Scott, thank you very much. I, I appreciated it. It was short, but uh, well said. I uh, do appreciate it. Yeah, it, it is not a religion. It is more of a political movement. Couldn't have said it better myself. Lou Pate in for Dr. Savage on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Lou Pate in for Dr. Savage. He'll be back tomorrow. And remember, you can check out all things Michael Savage at michaelsavage.com. I would encourage you with the Zika virus spreading to educate yourself and a pre-order diseases without borders. And, of course, while you're there, if you have not already, you can check out Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture, ra rising rapidly on the New York Times bestseller list. Um, and, of course, social networking is where it's at today. So check us out at A Savage Nation. And on Facebook, there's numerous sites out there, folks, that are uh, dedicated to Dr. Savage. And while we appreciate it, his site is the one with Government Zero, the cover of the book on there. So uh, you want to check it out. In the meantime, check out the show right now, Luke. Pate here with you, 855-400-SAVAGE. If you're just joining us, we talked about Donald Trump. Got the wind back in his sails today, calling out Ted Cruz, calling him a fraud, tweeting out that he stole the Iowa caucus, and uh, he, he's back with a vengeance. He's not, uh, he's not taking any guff. We also saw Rand Paul out, Rick Santorum out, and Scott Brown in, in for Trump, endorsing him, which... You know, people might, you know, they'll have different views on Scott Brown, but hey, he was elected up there. He he also lost an election, but there are people up there that do still support Scott Brown. Even though he lost the last election, he has a lot of followers. And, you know, every little bit helps. So I think that was a good endorsement uh, for, for Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump, he is back, and uh, I think it's funny that I was watching CNN during the break, and they had Jeb Bush on. They say he's fighting for his life. Jeb Bush... You seem like a nice guy, but you're done. Go home. Your daddy can't buy you the presidency. Your brother can't buy you the presidency. Go back to your family. Have a nice life. Enjoy the riches. You're not going to be president, at least not this time around. But uh, he's still hanging in there. Take a page out of Santorum's book. Take a page out of Rand Paul's book. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Donald Trump nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, that one, that one's going to be fun just to watch M MSNBC try and talk about that. Because Obama got his, so why not Trump? Uh, let's get back to the phones. Line 2, WABC in my uh, original home. Adam, welcome to the Savage Nation. I just wanted to tell you guys that, you know, what Obama's doing is they're shoving Islam down the American people's throat as if we have to accept it. We have no choice. But that's not what America is about, and it's like, it's so different. I mean, I'm a veteran. I served seven years in the military. I got hurt. I don't even get the benefits I earned and deserve. But they want to give it to everyone else on our dime. You know, there's a reason why the government's doing everything they do, because they can't stand the American people having what we have and what no one else has. And no matter what they do, Islamists, these, these terrorists, they do not want us to live because they hate our way of life. There's no peace with them. You cannot have peace talks with them, and you can't have dialogue with them. That's just the way they are, and that's just it. 
Adam, thank you for your call. I do appreciate it. Well said. Here's the deal. I've been hearing for seven years that I, as a white male living in the United States, somehow have white privilege, that I am somehow racist, that I am somehow bigoted, that there is freedom of religion in this country. And yes, but if I want to, and then there's free, freedom of the press and there's freedom of speech, but if I want to use my freedom of speech to say something negative about a religion which I think is negative or elements, the radical elements of Islam which are negative, I'm not allowed to do that. I and many other people out there, mostly the silent majority following Donald Trump now, we're tired of being named called. We're tired of being bullied by Obama, who's on the wrong side of every issue. You saw it with Trayvon Martin. You saw it with, with Henry Lewis Skip Gates, supposed to be so brilliant up there at Harvard. And what does he do? Yeah, Cop asks him for his ID. He doesn't know how to do it. Oh, he starts screaming racism. I mean, it is true. America is tired. White America, and I don't, I don't want to get into a race thing here, white Americans are tired of being called Islamophobic. We're tired of being called racist. We're tired of being called bigoted because it's not true. And we don't need President Obama lecturing us on the alleged virtues of Islam. Okay? Especially when a lot of what he said is not true. Muslims did not build the skyscrapers of Chicago. Might that have been a Muslim construction worker or two? But yes, the overwhelming majority of the workers there were, were immigrants who came over from Italy. They came into New York. They came into Boston. And then they spread out to places like Chicago. Um, you, you want to say they're our athletes. Don't, don't, don't you want to cite Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Cassius Clay? Cassius Clay, who bad-mouthed Joe Lewis? Uh, Cassius Clay, who was a, a draft dodger? Cassius Clay, who made racist statements? You could have Muhammad Ali. All right? Joe Frazier was always a better fighter anyway. Let's get back to the phones, uh, Let's go to um, oh, um, Helen. Helen, up in uh, uh, line nine, KUGN in Oregon. Hey, Helen, welcome to the show. Hi, I have one comment to make. Uh, Obama's talking about how peaceful the Muslims are, how their whole shtick is peace. Uh, uh, if that's the case, and let's just call them the good Muslims for the sake of argument, how is it that in the United States they're not doing anything to fight ISIS in this country, to fight the terrorists in this country. If they stand up for peace, why shouldn't they be doing something? I'm not hearing anything in the news or anywhere that they're going after ISIS people in the United States. And uh, Ellen, I, I they think... They probably uh, know where they are. I don't know I what think, they do in the Middle East, because I haven't heard that either, but uh, that's my point. Thank you. Well, that, that's an excellent point. Thank you for your call. I think part of what what your your answer is in your question, and you know when you when you your your runner up to your question saying that it's shtick, you know they're all peace is their shtick, <laughs> peace is their shtick. Now, I do think that law enforcement, there's you know good people in ICE and good people in DEA and FBI, and and they are searching for terrorists around the country. Law enforcement first responders, they're our friends, they're our neighbors, they could do it. A lot of times though, they're handcuffed by the administration. The President of the United States, President Obama, will not acknowledge Muslim fundamentalist ter terrorism. He will not say the terms radical Islam. He will never blame all the death and destruction on Islam or radical Islam. He won't even say it. Again, in his 45-minute infomercial today, he called it organized extreme elements or organized extreme ideologies. It is radical Islam. It is radical Muslims. Okay. Again, political correctness is domestic terrorism, and we have our own president talking down to us like we're a bunch of misbehaving little kids who don't understand what the heck is going on in the world. Mr. President, you are the one who does not understand what's going on in the world because you're such an ideologue, you cannot see straight. You deny what's going on. You put blinders on to things you don't like. You say things, and like the old schoolyard expression goes, just because you say it does not make it so. And quite frankly, you look like an idiot, and you sound like an idiot. Except for those who still pray at you. They, they bow and they worship all things Obama, like that idiot on CNN, Wolf Blitzer. The historic speech. No. Guy gets up in a mosque where we know there have been nefarious people, uh, Anwar al-Awlaki, linked to the former imam at this Baltimore mosque, 
It's funny, ironic, isn't it? And I just thought about it that he he brings up uh, he does this in Baltimore. The murder rate since the riots last year has gone through the roof. I think it's up like thirty nine percent. The murder rate in Chicago. I mean, excuse me, Baltimore might even be higher. And that's the place he picks to lecture and give some condescending speech. 